Okay. Uh, what the hell? GGG. <laughs> Thanks for watching my videos, I guess. This patch is insane. They added stuff that I specifically asked for in my last video. So, okay, I guess confirm that they're watching my videos. Pretty awesome. This is a patch. This is the patch. If you didn't see the video yesterday, they announced the coming patch notes for the next patch that's gonna fix Necropolis. Huge, huge changes, making the crafting better, making the in-map experience way better. They just announced what the actual patch notes are gonna be. They said they're planning on releasing it later today, which for them, right, for me, it's late at night, but for them, that will be at some point, uh, probably by the time I wake up, hopefully, which is sick. So let's go over these notes really, really quickly. There is some stuff in here that they didn't have in the video yesterday. So definitely stay tuned for this. I'm gonna go through it really, really quickly. I'm going to kind of gloss over the stuff from the video yesterday and just focus on the new things. So very first thing right here is they fixed the issue. Uh, this might not be affecting you, but for me, if you're using a lot of movement skills, if you felt any like eaten input, something that didn't feel really good, if it didn't feel right, um, this is a problem that a lot of people have identified and they said they have a fix that's coming. Um, so that's really big for me. Itemize the corpses. They said they're all going to do that. You just, you don't have to spend a chaos. You can just immediately, um, itemize it from the map. So you don't have to worry about your full morgue or anything. You can select the base type, really huge, gigantic overhaul to the crafting. So that's coming. Each of the downsides from area to area will now display the increase to the collectible corpses and all flames. So you now actually understand what those, you know, those downsides are actually giving us within the map, which is really nice. Added new 12 new all flames. I don't know what they do. Maybe they're really good. Uh, synthetic Fury might be really good. Syndicate Assassins, probably Betrayal. Pretty cool indicators for what these things are. Syndicate Researchers here too. So really interested to see what these are. Hopefully they're awesome. Increase the number of corpses and embers that you get. Uh, increase the drop rate of embers at all levels. Grave crafts that affect the modifier rating have been compressed. So we talked about this yesterday. This was in the preview. The uh, modifier tier rating, which is usually like life, fire, chaos, physical, all that stuff, is now just modifier tier. All of them flat. So uh, this is going to be really interesting for you're just going to raise the tier of everything. And you could just kind of really dramatically reduce the number of mods from just a single plus modifier tier, which is insane. So this and then the increased chance is now instead of having different tiers, it will always be 500%. So increased chance for life, always 500%. That way you don't have to just like fish for the good ones. The big change here, which I think is, uh, is the most important thing, is now when you see a corpse drop, you are way more likely to want to pick it up. Whereas currently, like even if I am planning a craft, probably eight out of 10 corpses, maybe nine out of 10 corpses, I'm not gonna pick up. Now they're pretty interesting. So that's pretty good. They buffed all of the percent chance ones. So the reforged socket, reforged link, the additional item, the split copy and mirrored copy. I mean, I haven't seen these three at all myself. So, you know, I didn't even know what the chances were previously, but now they got buffed a lot, which is great. Devoted modifiers that have a chance to convert now have their values increased. Devoted modifiers for the strongest monster now only have a single tier. Oh, this one's really big. So currently a chance to convert, like you could convert a armor item from the strongest monster, like the pack leader into a chaos orb, for example. And that would have like a 25% chance to convert to a chaos orb. So every pack gives you a one in four chance to drop a single chaos orb, which is just like, okay. <laughs> so making that 100% is actually really nice. That'll feel way better, particularly if you get the uh, the divine one. Many devoted modifiers that have multiple tiers no longer have the lowest modifier tier appearing in maps. So this would, uh, my assumption here is the really low bad ones that you know I think you are more likely to see in the campaign are just not gonna show up. Kind of something that we would like for crafting our regular items too. Like no one wants T10 mana on their I level 86 item, but that's what the uh, the tiers up here do. So they're kind of going along that line for the crafting. I wouldn't be surprised if after all these buffs, there might be a world where this one could actually go core. It's very, very powerful, but I could see a nerfed version of this going core, particularly with the Necropolis stuff on the Atlas. You know, maybe might be too powerful for them. Then we got the list of the very scary modifiers here, the crit chance, the chance to freeze, the always stun. These got nerfed significantly. You can look at the numbers here. It's way, way lower. Um, the always stun is now reduced stun threshold. So you're not 100% chance to get stunned. Um, and the stun duration is now going up from 40 to 100% instead of just you're always stunned. 
So this is really, really nice. The 100% chance to reflect hexes and non-damaging ailments, particularly for like shock, chill, or freeze. This feels really, really bad. People that are doing sap, scorch, or brittle, especially, they're getting crit a lot. You know, this being gone is really nice. So currently there's a flash charge modifier that just removes, like when you kill the monster, you just lose all your flash charges. And now it's just doesn't give you flash charges. So this is way better. Haunted modifiers that provided more damage for each life monster have been removed. These were making um, off-screen monsters if they had any range attack, basically one-shotting people. Because like one pack of monsters would have something like 240% more damage. So you just get one shot. The same thing for the attack and cast speed. Very similar idea. The, the fizz is extra with pen is now 10% instead of 20%. I think this is still a little bit scary, but this is still a huge improvement. Increase the amount of drops from all of the all flames. Really good. A lot of small little reworks to the passives on the passive tree. Increases the reductions to the haunted modifier effect. No longer affects devoted modifiers. So currently... The devoted modifiers, which are the good ones, and the haunted ones are the bad ones. If you did increase haunted effect, you would also get increased devoted effect. So this is a little bit of a nerf if you wanted to kind of like stack all that, but I think it's all fine. I, I don't think that's a big deal. Haunted modifiers now display the effects of the haunted modifier effect on the passives. The minimap icon for the name of Seer is now displayed at a higher distance away. This is really nice. He is really, really easy to miss. He's just a tiny little old guy sitting on a rock. So this is really nice for just seeing them on the minimap. And this is the reason why I think they might be watching my videos because I asked for this very, very specifically in the last video. And I haven't seen anyone else like say this exactly. Maps will no longer be open when you close the lantern. So currently when you open a map and then you see all the modifiers, you can't close it and then go and grab an all flame or you know, buy it from the trade or anything. The map just opens and then you're just, you're, you're out of luck. You can't really modify anything. So yeah, thank you, GGG. This is literally exactly what I asked for. <laughs> it just feels weird. feels weird to ask for something yesterday and then it's in the game. Morgue user interface is now sorted. This is much better, sorted by craft and level. So this will be way, way better to, uh, the, currently it's only sorted by level. And, you know, I understand that the, the item level does matter, but if you're just running T16 maps, which you're usually doing in the end game, it kind of just turns into a whatever. Inventory is no longer closed when you click on the morgue user interface. Control F works like it's supposed to. Gravecrafted items now drop closer to the headstone. Sure. Control click to cremate a corpse. So this way you can just like boom, 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 boom. Get rid of a lot of trashy corpses really, really quickly. That's really nice. Be careful, I guess, with uh, with clicking that. The UI for collecting a corpse is now less likely to overlap. Sure. Reduce the chance for the undertaker to block doorways. I haven't had that yet, but that sounds awful. And then the single biggest change, I think, for a lot of people here that have gotten to T17 maps. I was just running them a few minutes ago on stream and... Yeah, uh, I had four tier 17 maps that dropped today on stream and I was only able to run one of them. The other three hard bricked my build effectively and were unrunnable. You get these T17 maps, you, I got four in a day. I was mapping pretty relatively hard today and I could only run one out of four. If I was an SSF or hardcore especially, oh my God, like how bad would that feel? So they can now be modified by Chaos Orbs. This is so big. I think it's great for a Chaos Sync. I assume that most likely it's always going to have a bunch of modifiers and now you can roll it and actually run the maps that you drop. And I think that's, that's so big. <laughs> it's so big as well as increased item quantity and rarity bonuses. So currently I, at least when I ran the tier 17 map, I kind of didn't bother clearing all of the monsters because they're just extra hard. And the map that I was able to run, the modifiers were doable on the boss, but really scary for all of those monsters in the map. And so I just ran past all of them. But now if the quant and the rarity is much, much higher, like 250 quant or something, maybe I actually want to kill all the monsters. They also moved a lot of div cards around. Most of these div cards, so they, they pulled out the void and they moved it in there. I don't know. Most of these div cards are kind of bad. I get the idea. They want to give them like kind of a theme. But most of these, uh, Shield Bear, Wealth and Power, Dragon's Heart, they're not that bad. Cheater, Sucker of the Sinless, this one's for Bottled Faith. By mid-league, usually these are not worth very much. Samurai's Eye is very good. Some of these are pretty good. I get it. It's thematic. Maybe they have more value with stacked decks being less common. I don't know. But yeah, pretty interesting little change there. The Abomination map boss, they had their cooldown of the Bolt Lightning skill increased. And the damage of the Blade Fallen Storm Call has been reduced. This, uh, I haven't fought this boss myself, but I've seen other people fight it. It's currently insane. Like the ball lightning is just spamming all over the screen. It'll use it a lot. So I think that'll probably be pretty nice. And then the other thing that I'm really, really excited about is this bug fix here. I've gotten this like weird glidey feel where my character gets like desynced. It's really, really bad if you're playing a build that's like Leap Slam and Frost Blink or Shield Charge and Frost Blink, stuff like that. Um, your character will then like for a while, you'll get like kind of feels like you're kind of playing unpredictive, but not. I don't know how to describe it. Glidey is the word they're using. So yeah, really, really big. 
Also, this bug was insane. Fixed a bug where the essences of uh, meds here couldn't be converted. So normally these essences should be like 20, maybe 30 chaos at the most. They're like 60, 70, 80, 90 even uh, chaos on some of these guys right now. What a weird bug. But yeah, luckily this bug is getting fixed. So hopefully the prices will come down. My gloves that you craft with Essence of Delirium are trash right now. And it just feels so bad because it's like 65 chaos or something per Delirium. Fixed a bug where Life Leech from the Bone Barrier was applied at a tenth of its value. So Necromancers, huge, huge, huge buff for you guys right there. Fixed a bug where Rogue Exiles were normal rarity monsters. Fixed a bug where Twilight Temple could become unkillable. Yep, someone in my chat had that earlier today. Fixed a bug where Ritual Wards could sometimes be unable to be deferred. Didn't hit that. Fixed a bug where Atlas Passives weren't working. Fixed an issue where Alternate Art Demigod cannot be converted. Fixed an issue where did not sort with Alternate Art. Sure. Fixed a bug where it's not possible to turn in further intention. Fixed the bugs that cause teleporters to not work. Small thing, small thing, crash, crash. Okay, so this is it. I am genuinely really impressed. This is a gigantic patch. I've never seen this big of a buff uh, coming so quickly. They are clearly learning from previous mistakes in previous leagues, and they don't want another Calandra. This could just turn the league around. I recognize that there's a lot of people that are just saying, we quit forever, we're done. The game was bad for three days. I am never playing again. <laughs> I'm quitting the game. You released for three days and I don't like it, which you're always going to get crazy people like that. But I think this is enough to really get me excited to interact with the, the league mechanic. And particularly, I love that fix to tier 17 maps. I think they're the single best thing that was added this league. And I just want to be able to run them by actually, you know, rolling them to something that doesn't break every build in the game. That's it for me. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys are excited for this patch. I'm going to go live immediately when I wake up tomorrow if this thing is uh, is live because I want to play it. Can't wait to do this big crafting. My goal is to make a giga big D scepter, big damage scepter. And I just want to swing that thing around and just see how much damage I can do. So we're going to be doing that first thing after this patch. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye.